All right, guys, we're going to take a look at some of these hives. My microphone has failed, so I'll be doing a voiceover. What I'm showing you here is how I've left the gap at the lid for upper ventilation and an entrance for the bees to bypass the excluder. It's very important for the bees to be able to bypass that excluder on a nectar flow. Uh, the point of the excluder is not to force the bees through it, but to exclude the queen. So here we're looking at some pretty good progress in a super. And oftentimes they don't fill out the outside frames. So one technique that I like to use is to swap out the outside frames for the inner two frames. So as you can see, it's nice and filled out, but this outside frame is barely touched. So we'll scoot some over, place these inside frames to the outside and the outside frames to the inside. It's a very simple technique, but it allows you to harvest full supers. Um, I really don't like pulling supers and getting through there and then uh, you have all these boxes that are partially full or half boxes so uh, I take the time to make these manipulations so that when I harvest my boxes they are full supers of honey uh, otherwise I just feel like you're wasting time so as you can see I pull the two fullest frames which are always the center frames um, well not always but most always the center frames and then your outside frames so very simple technique now this box is ready for a honey super um, they've they've pulled out most everything the way they need it to be they have filled it up very well um, and they're working on it great so want to add the super uh, today it's a really hot day and I just happened to forget my box of foundation frames so we'll just go ahead and space these out eight frames which is where they're going to end up anyway so I always offset my supers so the reason I offset my supers like this is for ventilation and to allow the bees to continue working in these supers throughout the heat of the day. So you will very seldom see a large beard of bees on the bottom board. You will see more um, kind of like a Christmas tree garland wrapping around the, the hive there where the gaps are. So I'll offset it one way and then the next box will be the other, the opposite. You can do this during a nectar flow. Of course, it's not advisable uh, for you to have your honey supers this way during a dearth. Um, ideally, you'll have your honey supers off at this point. And even during a dearth, I supply an upper entrance through my lid. Um, my lids are all cut in a way that there is an upper entrance at all times. I feel like it promotes air circulation. Of course, I have my handy eight frame spacers here to just pop the frames the way I want them and we have them spaced to go. Now we'll take a look at these next types and see what we got. I can see some bees peeking out there along the crack so I'm sure that uh, they're doing their job up in the super now. Now with this super, the bees had wanted to work predominantly on one side. So the easiest thing to do in this case uh, is to just swap the super around. So moving the, the honey frames isn't as applicable as it is uh, as it was in the other super. Since they've worked the outside frame and kind of just worked from one side toward the middle. So 
you usually see this in weaker colonies. Um, these colonies have been split heavily and they will recover just fine and this won't be an issue. But usually on your first super or two, you'll see this. So the easiest solution is to just twist the box around. And that's a good way to get a full super of honey. Now they've worked this box pretty good and I think that they're ready for another one as well. If you can visualize in your mind the brood nest, the, the bees are predominantly to one side. So that's the reason why they're storing that nectar just in the one side of the super that's directly above where the cluster is. It's just the way that this colony uh, has grown and is growing. So again, we offset, we give them a good gap for the bees to come and go on both sides. It allows for the ventilation and allows for the bees to remain in those supers during the hottest parts of the day. Today, we were right around 100 degrees with uh, around 116 degree heat index. So it was pretty brutal. Now we'll check out this hive over here which appears to be, to have been a, a younger colony, probably one we replaced. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity, but we are seeing some work done in the super. Um, you have to remember guys, when you put these supers on, that typically, unless you just extracted it, there's a little bit of work to be done in these supers from over winter they have to uh, pull this comb out fix these cells uh, clean it up to their standards and get it ready to store nectar so there is a little prep time so you want to have your supers on before um, you actually have the flow going on so that the bees can can get it ready and get it going you don't want them wasting time uh, during the nectar flow They have quite a bit of work to do left in this super, so I think that they'll be good to skip for a little while. But we'll make sure and provide them plenty of access uh, to bypass that excluder and to ventilate this top box. Let's see what the next one's got going on. This one is a very new colony. I can tell by the markings on the lid that uh, it is a recently mated queen. So typically if I can get the duct tape free that was on the nuke box, I strip it off and stick it in the feeder. Just as a reminder of what I have going on in this box, the queen source, etc. So these will be ready for a super pretty soon, but they have some foundation left, so I need to do some sorting. I like to move the bare foundation frame out and place it in between two brood frames. Now, sometimes they will build a little bit of wonky comb like this, so I just shake the bees off. Um, getting them out of the way, and then I'll take my hive tool and remove all of that wonky comb and give them another chance to start it again between two brood frames. This colony's got some uh, really nice brood frames in it, so it'll be jumping along really quickly once all that emerges. And with the nectar flow on, they'll be able to pull out these deep combs really quickly. So I'm looking for open brood because I like to place the foundation between at least one frame of open brood. 
they don't like the space in the brood nest and they will work diligently to fill it. So uh, it's a good way to get your combs drawn out rather quickly. But yeah, this colony is looking pretty good. Now you want to be careful that uh, you shake all the bees off because you don't want that queen to be hiding under there. Another important thing is that you get rid of all of the weird comb shape. Uh, if you leave any of that structure that you don't want, they're going to start back building their comb from that odd structure and that's how they're going to build it. So you need to scrape back and cut back until you are into the uh, comb structure that you like and are wanting them to continue. Because bees finish jobs. That's just something about them. They, uh, they finish the job if you give it to them. So if you give them a frame and that start off point is a odd shaped comb, they're going to continue on that way. Typically, uh, if you give them this comb back, they will start back and fill it uh, the rest of the way out in the way that they need to. But I'll do this as many times as is necessary because I don't want that weird comb where uh, the queen can get behind there and makes things difficult later on. So we'll just center everything back up. We'll have this one situated. <clears throat> I like to have the foundations where they can do some work on them. The next time that I visit this colony, I will uh, do another manipulation if necessary and give it a super. So they're coming along pretty well. You can see my center groove cut out on the lid in that last shot there um, I just use it as upper ventilation and for oxalic acid application and um, I just like to have it in my lids now in this super we're not seeing a whole lot going on but the bees are definitely up there working and doing their thing. So one way to check for uh, the nectar flow and the strength of the nectar flow is to do a frame shake. Uh, when you do a frame shake, you can see uh, how much nectar is incoming. Because of course honey doesn't shake out, but uh, if you give a good shake and quite a bit of that falls out, then it's from that day. and you can tell that you have a significant honey flow on. So it's a good indicator. Uh, these bees have fixed up this comb where it needs to be to store nectar. Uh, they're actively storing nectar in it. So I would be comfortable in going ahead and giving this colony another super since we are on uh, a significant flow. It is 100 degrees. I don't know what it is with the heat index, but it is hot very hot um it's about two o'clock maybe not quite two o'clock i wanted to show you these bees were super um, fairly recently in this one but i wanted to show you how they are not bearding and they are working so They are still up in the supers working. Let's see what's being done. Okay, so yeah, they are, they fixed the comb and they are filling it with nectar. So. Just 
just want to show you guys why it's important to give this ventilation. Because even in the heat of the day, these bees are up in your supers working. Our summer flow is just getting kicked off here, so we'll just keep an eye on them, keep them with some room, keep them working. <laughs>